Oi friends, today we'll be creating the weapons for our FPS game in Unity in Blender. This is going to be a bit different than usual. I'm going to show you the general way or my kind of work, workflow or pipeline that I make the weapons. Because I don't think there's much sense in me uploading five videos where the commentary is pretty much the same. I already have one of these made for the previous, uh, previous series, but it's kind of outdated, so I'll recreate it. Also, if you're a beginner, I recommend you go watch my video on Blender Shortcuts or just go to Patreon and find a free cheat sheet that you can put on your other monitor or just write it down on a piece of paper just so you have it on the side. Because all of this is pretty simple. Uh, all I do is uh, just use G, S, R, E and Control R to move, scale, rotate, add loop cuts and extrude. First thing I like to do is find the weapons that I'm making. So for example, for the pistol here, I'll be making the M1911. And then I Google the name or I just find the blueprint, which is kind of the simplified version. You can use any of these, just make sure it's from the side view, uh, like this and not like this, or like this, because it's gonna be quite hard to uh, model if it's from a weird angle. You can save the picture. And then in Blender, what I like to do is copy my uh, player object, so the FPS arms, and then open a new uh, blend file and paste the arms in. This is just so I can get the proper scale for the weapons. And in the rig, I'll make a uh, kind of a fist shape or a holding shape with the arms. Sort of what you would do if you were holding a weapon. And once I have that, uh, in object mode, I'll add a new cube. And then I'll go into edit mode and scale it down to about the size of, you know, the empty space in the hand. Just so know uh, how big the gun needs to be. I'll scale the length, width and height so it fits. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a general one. And then I'll rename it. And what you can do is select the object. And then in the top left, well, first you got to make sure that the cursor is uh, centered. So press Shift C and then go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and then object, set origin, geometry to origin. Make sure you have the object selected. And then you can rotate it for 90 degrees so it stands upright. And this is gonna be kind of the base, uh, base thing I'm gonna start all my weapons from, so I'm just gonna duplicate it and then start modeling the weapon. Next, I'll add the image reference, so shift A, image, reference, and then find your image. Once you do, uh, it probably might be a wrong rotation, so you can press N and go to into the item tab and change the rotation to 90, 0, and 0. So 90 on the x-axis. And then I'll just move it a bit back, just so it's not in the way of the model. And at this point, I need to get the proper scale for the reference image, so I'll enable my grip scale and then try and place it around where the grip is, so it makes sense with the scale. Then I'll add a loop cut to the grip, delete the back side, go to the mirror modifier or to the modifier tab and add a mirror modifier with the Y axis and clipping turned on. And this way I don't have to model both sides, I just have to worry about one. And then I'll duplicate my grip scale, hide the original and start working on the model. So the first stage of making a weapon is blocking out the shape. And all I do is literally move, scale, rotate add loop cuts with Control R and E to extrude and try to get the general shape of the gun. Quite simple really. I suggest you kind of use your mouse wheel or middle mouse click and uh, look around every few, few seconds just to see that everything looks good from all angles. At this point I start thinking about which parts I want to move. So for example on the rig I probably want to move like the barrel top part. So I'll have to model that uh, separately. So on the same object in edit mode, I'll just press Shift A and add a cube. And this will add a second cube that I can scale, make sure it mirrors, so delete the back side. And then I'll just continue modeling that second part. And I'll do that probably for the trigger as well and the magazine as well. And just trying to get a blocked out low poly shape that I can use. If the other uh, parts are in the way, you can press L while hovering over it and then H to hide and Alt H to unhide. Just so it's not in the way, maybe, you know, that helps you. For the barrel, I'll use a cylinder that I'll split down the middle with the J and then I can delete the other side. I suggest you do this after you scale it because if you try scaling it while it's being mirrored, 
uh, it's you're gonna get a weird result. I'll just go ahead and show you all the base meshes for all the models that I made. There'll be five weapons. I'll create a pistol, knife, shotgun, assault rifle, and a sniper rifle. I think that gives us good variety for you know making the game. The next step would be smoothing out the model. And literally all I'm doing here is thinking about where the model uh, will be, you know, curved. Which is kind of hard from just one image, so you can always have Google open and just look at different uh, angles now. And see where it needs to be curved. And then use Control B to bevel, you know, select an edge and then bevel. And you can use your mouse wheel to add more bevels. And using Control R to kind of add a loop cut right next to the other loop cut and then move that other loop cut and kind of smooth out. Pretty simple, uh, just a bit of artistic skill that you need to pull it off, maybe a bit of technical skill as well. So yeah, I just smooth everything out, make sure it looks good. And here are all the other smoothed out objects. The third step would be adding details and there's kind of two little steps inside of that. So first I think about the two sided details. So for example, these screws that are in the grip would be on both sides. So just go ahead and add those. And then I start thinking about the details that are only on one side. So for example, like the bullet ejector thingy would be only on one side. And after I'm done adding the two sided details, then I'll apply the mirror modifier and add the one sided details. I just check the scale sometimes to see if it, if it looks good, if it works, and then I'll change it maybe a bit. After adding all the details, I basically have the whole model I want. You could of course go in and add m much more detail, you know, depending on how much you, you want or need. But then it's time to add color, and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna use a color palette to do that. So the same way we did it for the FPS arms. If you don't know how to create one, uh, just go watch that video, there's a link in the description. And it'll be, it's super easy. So it just uses one material and a texture uh, with plain colors. And then I went ahead and added some colors for the weapons. I think I had like four col colors, which are going to work for all the weapons, I think. And then I just go into the UV unwrapping tab. I press A to select uh, everything on the model. U, smart UV project. And then add a small island margin and, and UV project it. And uh, there's little, two little arrows in the top left that you can use to, you know, make sure what, what you select in the viewport is also selected in the UV editor, which is going to make it a lot simpler. And then I just move the UVs from color to color, checking how it looks. You could add like 10 different colors uh, with no problem. And once I add a color, it's time for the last step, which is rigging it, because I'll probably want some animations on it later. So what I do is, uh, in object mode, shift A, and add armature single bone. Make sure in the bone properties tab, or object data, uh, in the viewport display, you, you check in front so you can see through the mesh. And I'll add a couple of bones. For example, for this gun, I added a grip bone, which kind of the master bone. It's gonna control everything. And then I add one for the magazine, and one for each moving part, so one for the top of the gun or the barrel, and one for the trigger. And what I do is select all of these moving bones, and then lastly select the grip or the master bone, and then Control P, keep offset to make sure that all the bones follow the, the grip so we don't get any weird behavior when we animate this. And the way I weight paint this, it's actually quite simple. There's no, not much weight painting going on, actually. So what I'll do is select the model and then select the armature, control P and add empty groups. Now this will add, as it says, empty groups with no weight paints. And the way you can add them is select the mesh and then, or the model, and then go into the object data tab, the little triangle, and you'll see vertex groups. And there will be a vertex group for each bone. And then in edit mode on the model, uh, you can select a part of the mesh and then assign it to the vertex group. So for example, for the trigger, I would press L on the trigger to select the whole trigger and then assign it to the trigger vertex group. And I'll do the same thing for the magazine and the barrel. For the barrel, make sure you take the sides as well because they're gonna move with the barrel. And then what you can do is uh, there's a small button in the vertex groups panel uh, where you can select the vertex group. 
So I'll go ahead and select the trigger uh, group, then select the magazine and select the barrel. And at that point, I have all the moving parts that are already assigned. So I can press Control I to invert selection and it will select all the parts that are already not assigned. And I'll just assign all those to the uh, grip or the master bone. And at that point, I have a fully uh, weight painted uh, weight painted gun, gun that works quite well. Uh, since this wasn't really a exact tutorial on how to make each one of these, I'll be putting these up to download on my Patreon. Uh, you can find the link in the description. It's completely free. Don't worry about it. I know it's Patreon, but it's free. So you'll be able to download these, and once we go into Blender, or once we animate the weapons first, or the arms. Uh, you'll be able to just continue without having to make them. Maybe uh, you don't have time to make all of them. You maybe just want to make one or you don't want to make them at all, which is fine. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching and hopefully this helped you a bit. And I'll see you, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.